I needed to upgrade to the new system. Oh, and I'm like, okay. And that literally took hours. Oh, it's just crazy. All right, guys, we are here for the Living Water live stream Bible study. Don't I look skinnier? I look skinnier to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Juicing does mir it just works wonders, people. You got to try it. Praise God. Um, what did I want to tell you? I was sitting here. Oh, I was sitting here playing with my guitar. And I was thinking about you guys and thinking about um, um, how I hope that you um, picked a vision or something that you wanted to do for the year. Mine has been, um, I want to learn how to play the guitar. I want to learn how to play. And so that's on my vision board for the year. Praise God. Um, what are you doing this year? You know, what's on your vision board? What, what goals have you set for yourself? Learning how to play the guitar with greater proficiency so that I can um, worship. And when, you know, I can get back together with my, um, my home fellowship, I want to, you know, lead us in some worship and that type of thing. Um, so that's one thing on my vision for the year. Um, another thing uh, has been um, um, juicing and um, getting my health back, getting back in CrossFit shape. Um, I haven't really been able to balance the working out with the juicing, but I'm working on it. That's on my vision board. Writing, getting some books published this year. Um, so yeah, the music, the music, and I guess I'm inspired because I was watching, um, this family, they're actually, their last name is Ken, uh, uh, Kenna Mason. Um, they're out of the UK, um, black family, seven kids, all of them play beautifully. They play violin, piano, cello. I mean, I was so inspired, you know, after after watching them. And I was thinking, you know, if, if you want to develop that level of proficiency, you know, you really have to practice. So what's on your vision board for the year? Um, what do you want to do? Yeah, books published, yes. Matter of fact, I have some um, continuing education time coming up. Matter of fact, it might be next week. No, it's in a couple of weeks. And so um, I want to say it's in February. And I'm going to use uh, that time to get some stuff done. Praise God. So anyway, praise God. Um, be consistent in 2021. Yeah, so I'm juicing trying to lose a lot of weight, get back in CrossFit form. Um, I'm going to put a 5K on my um, um, list of something I want to do by the fall. <laughs> I'm kind of slow. It takes me a while. Um, so, and learning to play my guitar. Praise God. This is a Taylor uh, GS Mini. It's made out of Hawaiian Koa. Isn't it beautiful? Um, Taylor, my Taylor baby. This is a Taylor GS Mini. So this isn't one of the larger ones, but this um, this is about 800 bucks worth of guitar right here. Um, that's my baby. I have another one in out in the front. Don't tell him. That's Harvey. He's named after my tribe in um, uh, Canada. Um, my Canadian tribe gave him to me and I love him too. Praise God. He is a seagull. All right. So look, here I go. I want to show you this and then we're going to jump into the notes. Guess what I got? Look at that. Uh, can you see it? The Chosen, an interactive Bible study season one. What does it mean to be chosen 
It's a Bible study. Um, it goes, if you have not watched the Chosen series, season one, they're working on season two. I think there are eight episodes in season one, and it is phenomenal. It is one of the best dramatizations of the life of Christ with his disciples that I have ever, ever seen. Okay, it's very good. And so they were raising money for season two, and I've been supporting it. And I thought, wow, I would love to do that. So I ordered 11 copies of this. Um, and I'm going to try to get my home fellowship back together someplace other than my house. <laughs> my house is not big enough for us to be social distance in uh, that type of setting. Um, but I think we're going to work through this. Bam, the chosen, um, discover what it means when Jesus, okay, you can't see that on the back there. Okay, let me get it closer. Discover what it means when Jesus chooses you. I have 10 copies. I have 11, but one of them is mine. 10 copies. I'm going to, I think I'm going to use it in my home fellowship. Either that or I'm going to use it at church. Um, maybe invite some people to after church, like bring lunch, hang out with me and work through this study. Either way, we're going to get it done. We have more room at the church, see so more space to social distance. Okay. You got your notes. This is what we are studying. Colossians, Christ is all. You got to insert to go into your manual. The first few chapter uh, verses of chapter three. That's what we're going to be doing on tonight. So let's jump into it. Let's jump into it. I know a place, uh, Dr. Bernie. Okay, she probably saying she knows a place where we can have our um, table. I have a, t it's called the table. It's a home church uh, fellowship. And we have not really been together because of um, COVID. We haven't been together at all. Um, those of you who are not a part of that group though, if you want to do this, just go to, um, I think it's the chosen merch.com chosen merchandise. Um, it's available in an ebook as well, but you know, I like holding things in my hand. Um, go to the chosen's website and, um, look at the, up the merchandise and these are available. You can order yourself a copy. It's very good. It's based on each episode and um, helping you to work through it with the characters. Praise God. All right, guys, here we go. Let's pray. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Thank you, Lord for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We love you tonight. We adore you. We exalt you and lift you up. There is none like you, not one, none like you. And all the heavens and the earth, you alone are God. You rule and you reign. You reign supreme. We thank you for the privilege you give us of gathering together across this region, across this nation, even in other nations around the world. We're breaking open the bread of life, your word. We are drinking deep from rivers of living water, your word, your presence. <laughs> Lord, we have an explosive expectancy that you will break the seals of revelation off of your word and impart truth into our hearts. We're open, we are ready to receive. Change us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen, praise God. All right. Uh, Ruth, you'll have to tell me later or send me a message um, and let me know a place. <laughs> She's saying, I know a place. 
where we can get together. My house, I live in, in uh, Dearborn Heights and my house is a little house. I just don't have the room um, for like 11 or 12 people to be together and be six feet apart. Um, okay, praise God. Um, let's jump in, let's get started. Don't you love this music? I don't know how clear it's coming through because it's coming through my iPad. Um, but this music is by Fundo Musical, Musical, Fundo Musical, something Latin or Hispanic. Um, the, the song is called Yeshua, Yeshua. It's just beautiful, isn't it? It's just beautiful. Praise God. I spent two days ministering prophetically to um, my tribe over in, in um, St. Thomas area with this music playing in the background, Yeshua by Fundu Musical. All right, um, we are in um, Colossians chapter three. Uh, just a reminder, everything that you see revealed in this text, um, Paul wrote from um, prison, praise God. So imagine that, the things that he's writing, the faith that he's asserting, the truth that he's revealing is coming out of a place of extreme persecution. Look at that patch of gray. There's like a patch of gray. I can see it so clear. Look at it in there. My hair is doing that thing. It's turning gray. Praise God. Amen. I got a little distracted <laughs> watching how the light is hitting the gray. Okay. So Paul is writing this from prison. And um, I wasn't singing, Brenda. I was not singing. I was just playing my guitar. Yeah. I was not singing. <laughs> no. <clears throat> All right. So anyway, um, uh, Paul um, um, was under extreme duress and, and, and um, in prison. And yet he gives us one of the most powerful revelations of Christ <clears throat> that is written, you know, a complete discourse, a complete uh, theology on Christ. And so Colossians is a phenomenal book to read. You should, you should pull it out and read it in your favorite translation and then read it in some other translations um, as well. Um, and just see how it feels, you know. And then, of course, you can look at the Dr. Bernie um, uh, exegesis and translation, praise God. So we started with verse 1. We had worked our way through this. If, the, if you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, for Christ is seated at the right hand of God. We broke that down. Set your mind on things that are above and not things that are on the earth. We broke that down. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. We broke that down. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Um, so, and, and by the way, last week's teaching is still on my page. So you can go to my page and um, pull it up and, and sit through that class if you'd like. I tried to um, uh, download it to my YouTube channel, but they have done something sneaky that keeps you from doing that. Unless you're like real techie and know how to do it beyond my level of, of um, understanding, I may have to ask my son to take a look at it. So I'm trying to put this class on my YouTube page as well. But the last week and probably tonight's won't be there until I figure out um, a new way to do that because they changed the way that I was doing it. So you can't do it anymore. Um, then we looked at verse four, when Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. We went into verse five, end up put to death, therefore, put to death, kill it kill it, slay it, destroy it, deprive it of its influence. What is earthly in you, sexual immorality, and we, what is worldly, um, what is unholy. And we broke that down. 
in case you were wondering, well, what did that mean? We went into great detail, sexual immorality, pornea. We looked at what that means from a biblical perspective. And basically that means anything that is not one man born a man with one woman born a woman in the covenant of marriage, a real marriage with a real license, a piece of paper where you stood before a judge or a clergy and it was registered with the region in which you live, anything outside of that, any type of sexual expression outside of that is pornea, okay? And it is earthly and it must be put to death. Okay. Impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. We broke all of those down. So we were on verse six, and that's where we're going to pick it up. Um, verse six in Colossians chapter three, verse six reads, on account of these, on account of these, on account of what? On account of sexual immorality, impurity, pathos, which is the Greek word for passion, which is lust and inordinate affection, um, vile passions, evil desire, um, uh, evil, um, lustful cravings, desire for things that are forbidden, covetousness, um, idolatry, which has to do with great wealth and blowing it on yourself or wasting it um, on, you know, you one person and you live in a 20 room mansion or something crazy like that, you know, just you, using resources wrongly. That also is idolatry. And, and so the word says on account of these, those things mentioned in verses one through five, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. Okay. On account of, that's the Greek word dia. It means through these or because of these or by means of these, the wrath of God is coming. So take a look at what's happening in America. You know, when stuff crazy starts happening, you know, don't wonder why. It'll be because America, your, your, your new president, okay, let, let, me, let me rewind. That wasn't quite right because I live in the country, so he's my president too. But I did not vote for him, but I will pray for him. Our new president just signed all kinds of legislation by executive order that fits up in verse five. So he did it from the highest office of the land, which opens the door to the wrath of God coming. That's why when it comes to political stuff, we try to tell people you cannot be Democrat, you cannot be Republican, you need to be kingdom. And you need to weigh things from a kingdom perspective and go to the polls and vote accordingly because you open doors in the realm of the spirit and you will open them. And so when the leader who is the head and the anointing starts at the head and flows through the body, so it starts in the Oval Office and flows through the nation, whatever is going on in the head will flow through the body. And so um, on account of these things, when we legislate these things, when we say that um, the wholesale slaughter of unborn children is women's health care, then we open the God, we open um, our, the, the nation, the region up to the wrath of God. Are you still there? Or did I lose some people when I said that? I'm just trying to help you understand it and apply it. The, I didn't write Colossians, Paul wrote Colossians on account of these, dia, through, because of, by means of pathos, by means of cockles, um, epithumia, evil desire, by means of covetousness, by means of idolatry, by means of pornea, all every derivative of sexual immorality. When that becomes the norm, when a nation begins to call right wrong and wrong right, then it opens the door for the wrath, the orge, the wrath, the anger, the vengeance, the indignation, the violent emotion, 
punishment inflicted by magistrates. Now that's very interesting. So that, that means then that you need to pay attention to what will be coming from the magistrates, like nations around the world and their ability to inflict um, um, indignation and vengeance upon a sinful America. I'm just saying, okay? So uh, it says on account of these, the wrath, the orge of God is coming, erkoma. That means it will begin to manifest. It will, it, the wrath of God will begin to come forth. His wrath will become known. His wrath will come into being. It will begin to arise, appear on the scene. Pay attention to what begins to happen in the news in this nation as a result of verse five and everything above that. Okay, and not only nationally, but pay attention to your own life, how you live, how you walk. If you are, um, um, you know, living according to the word of God, or if you are playing one of these um, cheap grace, you know, um, games where you think that you can do anything that you want to do, and you won't go sliding through the pearly gates into heaven, it doesn't work like that. You just got through reading it. The scripture says, put to death all this, all that stuff, okay? Because through that, you open the door to the orge, the anger and the vengeance of God. Woe unto the man or the nation that falls in the hands of an angry God or the angry God Almighty. Now look at verse seven. Look at this, because here, here's how you know that God is, isn't playing, see? Paul says, or the Holy Spirit through Paul says to us, in these, you too once walked when you were living in them. So that lets you know that something happens when, or should happen when we come into relationship with God through Christ. In these two, in all of those, that stuff up there, the idolatry, the covetousness, the, the, the pathos, the, the passion for stuff that is not good for us. I love him and he's no good for you. You're unequally yoked. He's not walking with the Lord. He don't know the Lord, don't care nothing about the Lord, but you still want him. I'm a witness that that will not work very well, okay? Evil desire. You know, the wrath of God is coming. The scripture says that we used to, we once, that is the Greek word pote, pote. It means a time in the old, in the old, back in the day, okay? Um, in time past, formerly, formerly, that's how you used to roll, <laughs> but that's not how you roll now, beloved, okay? That's how you used to roll. In times past, listen, who, if walls could talk, we could tell you some stories about the stuff we used to do, okay? But in Christ, you know, you used to walk. You once walked peripateo in the Greek. It is a Hebraism for to live, to, and you've heard me say that one of my favorite Hebrew words is the word halak, and it means to walk is translated to walk. For it, it's a Hebraism that has to do with how you live in. When it says that, you know, Enoch walked with God. I mean, that word halak means to walk. It also means to walk and talk, to be conversant with. So uh, Enoch walked and talked with God all, all through the day. You know, he, he lived with, he was occupied with God. That's why it's one of my favorite words. And it is one of the one of it is the oldest ancient pathway, which is going to be a part of my um, upcoming encounter um, uh, retreat um, series encounters, the ancient pathways that I'm working on. Um, walking with God is the most ancient pathway. Okay. So anyway, to you once walked. So it's saying that in these, in those things that I mentioned previously, that's how you used to roll. That's how you used to live. In, in former days, you were occupied with ungodly idolatry, ungodly passions, pornea, all types of sexual immorality. It's okay. I know you want me to think you didn't, but I, you know, I know better than that. Okay. 
So in these two, you once walked when hote, as soon as, or while, or whenever, as long as you were living in them, zao, in, in other words, you were active in it. You That's how you were living. That's how you were breathing. You were occupied with it. You were caught up with it. Paul says, by the Holy Spirit, that's who you used to be. And knowing that is a key to breakthrough and a key to victory. Knowing that that's who you were, but in Christ, all things are passed away. Behold, everything has become new, okay? And so you used to live like that. So when your flesh wants to rear up and tell, influence you to do crazy things and your mind flips through some old files and wants to then find um, those memories and agree with your flesh. No, you have to get your mind to agree with your born again, renewed in Christ, hidden in him, a spirit. Okay. All right. So look at verse eight, but now, but now, meaning in Christ, Nuni, now at this very moment, you must put them all away. If you are in Christ, you must put them all away. Circle that in your notes, circle that in your Bible. You must put, so listen, that's why when you go up in one of these churches that's teaching you, go back up to verse five, that people can live like any of those and still be in Christ. They're lying to you. The scripture says, those things will provoke the wrath of God. The Bible says that's who you used to be, not who you currently are. And so you must put them away. Put away what? Anger, wrath. Here's some more to add to your list. Malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Why, why, would, it, why would Paul suddenly shift to what comes out of your mouth? Because what you talk about is what you will do. So if you're talking certain things, if you're talking verse eight, you're going to do verse five, okay? Because what we meditate on, what we think about, what we say to ourselves, is what we do. So let's break these words down. But now is the Greek word nuni. It means at this very moment, not tomorrow, not after your date that you got with him because he all that, no. Now, at this very moment, you must put them all away. That, that is one Greek word, that entire expression, which is apotithemi, apotithemi, apotithemi in the Greek. It means cast it off, lay it aside, lay it down, put it away, put it off, cast it off. See, when that thing rises up, cast it off. At that moment, don't wait till later. At the moment it knocks on your door, put it away. Put it away, okay? Put away what? Anger. That's the Greek word orge. That's that same word used up above, wrath. God will be indignant. You put away wrath and vengeance and indignation and violent emotion. When we get violently angry, that's not the spirit of God. All of that stuff you see in the news, whether it's Antifa or, you know, um, people exploiting the concept of Black Lives Matter and using it to do great harm and damage, violent emotion, burning stuff, turning stuff over, threatening people. That's not the spirit of God. That, what, see, do you understand the words that are coming out of my that's not the spirit of God, okay? The scripture says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You let God handle that. Anger, vengeance, indignation, violent emotion. The word says, put it, cast it off, take that off. Don't, don't, don't wear that as a garment. Anger, wrath. That's another Greek word. Um, it, it's the Greek word thumos, and it means fierceness, indignation passion where you you so upset you you breathe in hard I mean, your anger is hot and boiling up that's not the spirit of god 
You so mad you can't even catch your breath. You just, you know, that you, you've seen people get that caught up in a thing, you know. You have to put that off, take that off. Malice is the Greek word kakia. It means badness, depravity, naughtiness, evil, wickedness. All of these words, none of these words are good. Stuff that you want to, you know, um, uh, unless it is the righteous indignation of the Lord working in and through you. But when it's you, your flesh, put it off, cast it off, kill it, put it down, take it off. Malice, kakia, badness, all of that. Slander, blasphemia, blasphemia. It means evil speaking. Slander. Injurious speech to another's good name. Oh my God. You mean some of the nasty stuff that we have said about people, particularly those in leadership, those in the Congress or the Senate or the White House? Oh my God. You mean that we should not? be saying those things? Wait, slander, blasphemia. I'm just telling the truth. Okay, evil speaking, slander, injurious speech to another's good name. Well, if they got a good name, I guess if they don't, <laughs> you might be saved. No, impious and reproachful speech, injurious to divine majesty. Meaning you definitely shouldn't be saying, um, things about the Lord that do not be true. Okay. So, but now you must put them all away and it gives you a list. Obscene talk. This is more stuff that comes out of our mouth. Aishkrologia, aishkrologia, vile conversation. All that You have some believers that curse worse than, than sailors, you know, People on the street, um, and they think it's okay. God understand. No, obscene circle, obscene talk. If we're a believer, we should not be involved in vile conversation, sexting, texting people, uh, sexually explicit messages. That's not what Christians do. Filthy communication, foul speaking, obscene speech. These are the things that we, we put off because all of these engender the wrath of God along with that list in verse five. Um, what does it say? Put these things, obscene talk, from your mouth, from your mouth. That is your face. What's coming out, <laughs> what's coming out of our face? What's coming out of our mouth? And also remember your words are the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema word of God, the spoken word of God. So your words are your weapon, they're your sword. And so you were not to let these things come out of our mouth, okay? That's the word of God. These are, these are the types of behaviors that you need to get in your prayer closet and deal with between you and the Holy Spirit. Just be honest, the Lord knows anyway, when you're thinking or feeling a certain way, we take it to the Lord in prayer. Look at verse nine. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, okay? So when, you, when we're in Christ, we gotta get rid of our excuses because we have Holy Spirit in us that gives us the power and the grace in him as we walk with him and as we renew our mind with the word of God, then the word in us, in our soul, and the word in us, in our spirit, come together as the inner man strengthened through the written word logos, and the spirit of the word in us, and then it changes the rhema, what comes out of our mouth, okay? And so do not lie. That's the word pseudomai. It means, oh my God, did anybody bring white out? 
So, oh, I got some. Here it is. Here's the white out. You might, you might want to wipe that out of your screen. No, you can't wipe, wipe it out. The word says, do not lie. It, that word pseudomite, it means utter and untruth or attempt to deceive by deliberate falsehood. You know what you're getting ready to say is not true and you say it anyway. With, with intentions of deceiving someone, that is a pseudomite. That do be a lie. Okay, and so these are things that we are not to do in Christ, because remember from um, the, the, the verses that we've already studied in Colossians, we have been hidden in him. We, we have been hidden so deep in him that it should be his nature and character that begins to come forth from us. So we don't lie. We put off. We've seen that word before. Put off, it means you completely divest yourself from, from these things. You divest, you put off, um, you divest, your, you separate from what is put off. You put it off and you pull away from it. You don't, you know, take it off, but keep it right near you so you can stroke it every now and then or pet it or go back in your little closet and get it and put it on, you know, when you live in your double life. No. You know, you you separate from what is put off. You strip off for you, for your own advantage. You disarm that thing. You disarm it through the power of the word and the power of the Holy Spirit. You crucify your flesh. That's how you put it off. You crucify your flesh. And you also, thank you, Holy Spirit. You also confess what the word says about it, which is that it was put off in Christ. So stop trying to pick up what's dead, what was crucified at the cross. So you put off the old paleos, the old worn out, the old wine. You put it off, you leave it alone, you leave it behind. The old self, anthropos, the old man, that you, the, the part of you that was, that was nailed to the cross you know, that, that died when you received Christ as Savior, okay, and you were resurrected, the, the one new man in him. So we put that off, okay? You disarm it when it wants to, the enemy wants to whisper words to resuscitate it. No, get out of here. Get, get away from me with those pads. You're not going to resuscitate the old man, okay? So you put it off, with the old self, with all of its practices, that's the Greek word proxies, all its functions, all the deeds, the stuff that it, it does and that it did, its office, its work, its mode of acting, you put it off, okay? Um, and then look at verse nine, and have put on the new self, uh, so wait, go back. So you don't lie to one another and you don't do those other things because it says you should circle seeing that in verse nine, seeing that. So you, you, you don't do these things because you have put off the old self and all of his practices and you have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So we put on in duo. It means to sink into a garment. You, because you have clothed yourself with, you have been endued with the new naos, a fresh, regenerate, younger, recently born self, okay? Not the old you, the new you, the fresh in Christ you. See, the naos being renewed. That new you stays new as you wash it in the water of the word, as you um, renew your mind with the word of God, as you soak in the presence of the Lord through worship and prayer and adoration. And so you keep the new self new, naos, fresh regenerate, younger, recently born, 
refreshing it, renewing it every day. You, you renew it every day. Anakai no'o. Anakai no'o. It means you renovate it. If, it, if, if, the, if the new you starts smelling stale, looking like, you know, it needs to be, re you renew it, you renovate it. You cause it to grow up. You, 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 you feed it, you put it in a place where it can get new strength and vigor. Um, it means to be chained, changed into a new kind of life as opposed to the former corrupt state. That's what you do in Christ, see? That's why the Lord gave us the Holy Spirit. And so it is renewed, how? In knowledge, epignosis, epignosis, that's full discernment. That is not just knowledge, not just a, a, accumulating um, information about anything. No, no, no. It is, pre this particular word means precise and correct knowledge. So the new self, the new you, the born again you is renewed. You keep your, your fresh naos new man new by renovating it with knowledge, epignosis, precise and correct knowledge. And you know that that knowledge is precise and correct if it is after the image, the icon, the likeness, the resemblance, the image of the Son of God into which um, true Christians are being transformed. So anything that doesn't bear his image is not epignosis, precise and correct knowledge. The only way for you to know whether or not that is the case is if you get in the word and spend time with the word so that you get to know his voice, his heartbeat, what he likes, what he doesn't like, so that when you see a thing that is pretending to be him, you can say, no, no, no. Or when you hear something that is claiming to be a message of unity or a message of wholeness or a message of love, don't drink the Kool-Aid. You need to know whether or not something really is the spirit of God. Are you guys with me? Because listen, the world, the world would try to feed you all kind of crap. Chocolate covered crap. Chocolate covered crap with, with cherries and strawberries in it. It's still crap. But if you don't know that, then you'll just feed, eat it, feed it, receive it. Oh, I'm going to do this because so-and-so. You have to try the spirit and see whether or not it be of God, okay? And I say it all the time, and I'm gonna continue to say it. That's why me personally, I always give people notes and information so that they can test what I'm saying for themselves. And if it's not right, don't eat it. Don't feed on it. Don't receive it if it's, if it's not right, okay? Um, because you want it to be precise and correct knowledge. And that means that it should be after the image, the icon of its creator, its katizo, um, its, its creator, the one who shaped it and made it. And so we know that Jesus, Yeshua, is the creator. He shaped and formed everything that has been created. He is the creator. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then it says in him, what? All, everything that was made was made by him. He is the creator. You go back to Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then John comes along and tells you that Jesus is that creator. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Verse three, all things were made through him 
and without him was not anything made that was made. Creation was a partnership of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The, the Lord spoke, Holy Spirit brooded over the word and brought it into manifestation, even as he does today, okay? And so, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in precise and correct knowledge after the icon image of its creator, Jesus, okay? Here, here, and, and um, I don't think this is in your notes. This might just be in mine because I went back and updated some things. But I thought it was interesting. That word here is the Greek word opu. It's spelled O-P-O-U. So here is the word opu, and it means whereas, whereas. So you could say here there is not Jew and Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, um, um, free, but Christ is all um, and in all. So I made some notes. I went in and looked at um, that verse. And so essentially it says, whereas there is not Greek and Jew, there's there, circumcised and uncircumcised, because of course, Jewish people were, Jewish men were circumcised and had that covenant and non-Jews usually were not. So, but he's saying that in Christ, whereas there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, that word in the Greek means one whose speech is rude, rough, harsh. It was non-Greek speech. So people whose languages were these crude, rough, harsh kind of languages, um, non-Greek um, speech, they called barbarian. And Scythian, which meant rude and rough, they were regarded as the wildest of the barbarians. Um, slave, that's the word doulos, bond servants. Free is eleutheros, it means freeborn or those who have been liberated. So in other words, he's, he's including everybody here where like in Christ, there's no Jew or Greek, uncircumcised, circumcised, barbarian, Scythian, you know, it's doulos, slave, free, but Christ, Messiah, is all things and in and with all, okay? So essentially, wherever you are from culturally, you in Christ, we become one new man. We become one family, okay? Whether you are black, white, Hispanic, Asian, um, First Nations, um, you know, um, wherever your ancestors are from, Africa, you know, wherever you, in Christ, whether you are a, a um, culturally and genetically Jewish, or you are what is considered Gentile, Christ is all and in all. When we come into him, we're all one. That's what he's saying. So put on then, verse 12, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Come on. We, we need to remember that all for the next several years, okay? As we are praying for our nation that is being led by numbskulls of both parties. They are numbskulls. And so we, okay. There are people, let me find a better word. There are people who just need some prayer, okay? So we're going to pray for them because we need to put on, that is in do all. That means we need to sink into a new garment, sink into a new garment. We need to be clothed, endued with, with the anointing from on high because we are God's chosen ones. His Eclectos, eclectos, his select. We are his favorite. I know, I know you thought you was his favorite, but we in Christ, us, we are his favorite. We are picked out. 
That's the study that we're going to be doing, me and some peeps. We are chosen by God. We are the best of our class. Man, that'll make you that'll make you take a step back, won't it? We are the best of his class. Excellence. Put on then as God's God's chosen ones, his select, his, his favorite. When, you know, in other words, Paul is saying, act like you know that you have been chosen. Act like you know that you're the best of, of a particular class, that, that you have been clothed, you've been in duo with excellence, that you are preeminent. When, when you know that, when you know that, then as, as God's eclectos, then you, you act this way, holy, holy. Make, make your lips say that word, holy, holy, hagios, sacred pure, morally blameless, consecrated, a saint. That's how we're supposed to act. Holy, um, beloved, agapao. This is that covenant God kind of love. To love dearly. This is the God kind of love. And so as God's chosen ones, because the scripture says that God is agape, agape or agapa, or he is love, then we too in him are supposed to be beloved. We are supposed to be um, people who are not only in him, in love, but loving out to others, okay? So we're holy, we are beloved, we are compassionate, oiktirmos. That means that we show mercy. We, sh we show pity and compassion to others. That's, that's what comes out of godliness. So compassionate. We are to have um, uh, um, compassionate hearts. That's that Greek word, which I won't try to um, on. It means that the compassion is in our heart, in the deepest part of us, your heart, was um, considered like the depths of you, your bowels. The, the bowels were considered the seat of tender affection. Well, that's really prophetic, isn't it? Because if something goes wrong with your intestines, your bowels, if you get an infection in your, your bowels will mess with everything in your life. You let your bowels get infected and it affects everything. It will cut off your ability to be compassionate, you know, if there's infection there in the natural. So you know it's true in the, in the, in the spirit, you know, your kindness, benevolence. So that's why it's referred to as our heart. So we are to have compassionate hearts. We are to show mercy and pity, you know, that's not what we're doing in this nation. Our Congress right now is trying to impeach a president that's no longer even in office. That's not compassionate heart. Okay, I'm just saying. Uh, people don't like it. I don't know why people don't like the truth. I know if I were ever in trouble, I would want people to extend to me um, not just correction, but a compassionate heart. And the word says, you treat others as you want to be treated. And then that same verse in Luke 6, I think of verse 31, says, be merciful, you know, as your father in heaven is merciful. That's how we're supposed to act as believers. That's in the book. You, you, you're looking right at it. So I have a compassionate heart, kindness, crestotes. It means moral excellence, goodness, gentleness, integrity. Have integrity, see, in the way that you carry yourself. Humility, um, that word has to do with, that's a long Greek word. It means humiliation of mind, modesty, lowliness, having a humble opinion of yourself, a deep sense of your moral littleness. This is what, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus um, demonstrated 
when remember the scene where the religious leaders bring drag this poor woman throw her at jesus feet the woman that had been caught in adultery they don't bring the man they bring the woman okay which has to do that's gender bias right there they bring her and jesus said what to them he, he knelt down in the dirt and he began to write and one by one they started dropping their rocks you wonder what was he writing in the dirt probably you know sins that he knew by the spirit that they had all committed and so you know that when that moral littleness you know begin to rise they drop their rocks sometimes we forget where we were and who we used to be before we put on our super saint, you know, garment, before we endure, oh, before we, we were clothed with a new, you know, garment. We forget how we used to live and the things that we used to do and the places we used to go and the things that we used to say, some of which followed us on over into the kingdom. We forget how we struggled with things and how we had to fast and pray and ask God for mercy. And we wanted mercy. We wanted God to be kind to us and to, to, to understand when we were struggling with things, but we don't want to extend that to others. The devil is a liar. The Bible says, put on then as God's chosen ones, his eclectos, his elect. You put on then holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness. That's the Greek word proutes. It means um, mildness of disposition, gentleness of spirit, meekness. Meekness is not weakness. The scripture says that Moses was meek, okay? Moses was by no mean a weak man, you know? Um, uh, he was a prince of Egypt, you know? Um, you, you know the story how he got into Egypt as um, adopted by the um, daughter of Pharaoh. So you can imagine Moses was not a weak man, but he was a meek man. And you write this in your notes. One of the best, one of the best definitions of meekness that I have heard is that meekness is strength under control. Strength under control. You know, I think that's a powerful definition of meekness. Put on meekness, mildness of disposition. You don't have to always play your hand. You, you, you are a deadly weapon in the hands of God when you know who you are and, and whose you are and, and what, who is in you and what you carry. But you can carry it in with strength under control, meekness. And patience, macrofumia, macrofumia. It means long suffering, patience, endurance, uh, constancy, steadfastness, slowness in avenging wrong. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going to get you. I, I got you. Yeah, I, I got something for you. No, that's, that's not the nature of Christ. That's not Christ. Patience. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> we don't like it. We don't like it. I, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's in the book. It's, it's in the book. Okay. Bearing with, oh my God, get the white out. Bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint, against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you. Do you know that unforgiveness will take you to hell? Do you, do you know that? Okay, you don't believe me. Okay, wait, let, just give me a minute. Oh, where is it? Let, let me see if I can help you. Let me, let, you. We have to forgive. We have to be people who are forgiven. Well, number one, it's in, it's in the Lord's prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, um, uh, um, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as 
just like in the same manner that we forgive those who have sinned against us. So essentially what you're, what you're praying, whenever you pray the Lord's prayer, you're asking the Lord to treat you just like you treat others, to forgive you as you forgive others. If you're not forgiving others, then you cut forgiveness off as a, as a flow into your own life. Okay. You cut it off through your unforgiveness. Um, 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 um. Matter of fact, um, in Matthew chapter six, when um, Jesus is teaching them in his, his rabbinic teaching on the Mount called the Sermon on the Mount, but he was considered a rabbi. He was actually teaching. Um, the Lord's prayer is verses nine through 13. And then in verse 14, he says, for if you forgive others, their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But look at verse 15. But if you do not forgive others, their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Okay. And so um, forgiveness is a serious thing. So verse 13 in Colossians chapter three says, bearing with one another. Um, um, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. So that word bearing with, aneko, it means to endure. We're supposed to endure some stuff with each other. We're not just supposed to throw each other from the train when, when people do something that you don't like or, you know, you're not having your way, <laughs> you know, you're going through some things. We have to learn how to take some things to God in prayer, how to begin to hold one another up in prayer, how to minister truth to one another in love, not to um, um, try to, you know, tear people down and, and destroy them you know, which is what you see happening in our nation. People want to destroy each other out of jealousy and envy and strife. It is not the way of the Lord. We are to bear with one another. And if we have a complaint, that's the Greek word mumfe. It means if, if, you, if you're blaming somebody for something, if you have a, a quarrel with someone, if you have a complaint against anyone, Oh, I, I need to, I need to get with you. I got something to tell you. That's not what it says. It says you forgive them. And here's what's interesting about that. I found this interesting um, because the other word forget for forgive, for instance, um, it's a fee me. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but let me double check. Um, let's go to, let me go in the Greek. Matthew 6, uh, let's go to verse 14. Okay, if you forgive, yeah, it's aphiemi. It's spelled A-P-H-E, uh, scratch that, A-P-H-I-E-M-I, aphiemi. And it means to send away. It means to release it and let it go, aphiemi. It means to exhale, you, you release it and let it go. That's a type of forgiveness. This is a different word. I, 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 that's why I like digging into the language because you would think that this forgive is the same forgive that's mentioned in Matthew chapter six, but it's not. This is a different word, okay? Um, I see me exhale let me stop holding everything in you know that if you you forgive your neighbor you release your neighbor you let that you let it go you have to exhale breathe release people and put them in god's hands this adds another dimension look look um look at this this forgive is charizomai charizomai and it means to grant as a favor. It means in kindness, because your heart is now caught up in Christ's heart, you pardon or, or, and or you even rescue them. Look, it means 
you do something pleasant. Here's the white out here. I know you guys want to wipe that one out. You do something pleasant or agreeable to them. You don't try to destroy their life. Man, write that in the margin. Circle that word in your personal Bible and put charisma. Charisma. Then me to grant as a favor in kindness, you pardon. You even rescue them if they need it. You do something pleasant or agreeable to them. You graciously um, restore one to another. That's the heart. That's 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 the heart of God. You know, um, someone says uh, they struggle to forgive. You know, um, man, I did a whole teaching on that. I, I, I in the past I've done entire retreats, like two and three day retreats with women's groups on forgiveness. Because most believers, uh, Monica, most believers, most people struggle with forgiveness because they don't know what it is. Um, and once you understand what it is, you'll, you'll find grace in Christ to do it. A lot of people think that if you, um, um, still remember, you'll hear people say, well, if you still remember, you haven't forgiven. That's not true. Your brain isn't designed to forget. You have all these intricate files and hard drive system in there. Anything you touch, taste, smell, or experience, you're going to remember. Okay. Um, so forgiveness is a dynamic. Like I said, afi'emi <clears throat> means you exhale, you bring it, you take it to the Lord and you release it into his hands and let it go. And I have an entire teaching. You can go to my YouTube, <clears throat> uh, wait. You can go to my YouTube channel. Um, let me see what it's called, my channel. Uh, let me go into my videos. And it is called, it's called Forgiveness. If you go on YouTube um, to my channel under my name, Bernardine Wormley Daniels, you'll see an in-depth uh, three-part three -part teaching on forgiveness, okay? Um, and if you uh, want those notes, uh, message me later and I'll see if I can find the notes and I'll, I'll even send you the notes, okay? Um, this particular forgiveness means to grant as a favor. You, you, as a favor, you extend kindness. Um, you come on guys. That's what God did for us in Christ. We didn't deserve eternal life, a garment of holiness and righteousness, grace and mercy for all of the vile, wretched things that we have done. What did he do? He extended kindness to us. He pardoned us and rescued us. He did something pleasant and agreeable when we were not worthy. He clothed us in a new garment. He gave us his name and his spirit. You put it in us, you know. He restored us to, to um, um, our, uh, his original intent for us before humanity fell in the garden. And so he he requires the same. And listen, I'm telling you, it, it's not easy. It takes the Holy Spirit along with a revelation, which is why we're doing this, so that um, so that we understand that you don't have to like it. You're just gonna do it as a favor, okay? And, and as an act of kindness. And I'm, I'm telling you, I, I know, because I remember when I got divorced, it took me a while to be able to pray for my husband as I knew I was supposed to pray for him, but I had a hard time. I, I sometimes all I could get out was God, just good, just, I was so hurt and angry and broken, you know, and finally God just deal with him. That was all I could get out. God just deal with him. But as the Lord began to deal with me, I got to the point where I, where I was able to pray, Lord, bless him. Lord, bless him. 
Lord, Lord, forgive him. Lord, um, um, you know, open doors, help him to find a job. He's got kids that need him. He's got kids that need his support and his love. You know, so that's that word charisma. So we forgive as the Lord has forgiven. That's the same word, charizomai. As the, as the Lord has given us a favor by doing everything in us and for us and in spite of us that he has done, then we do the same. So you also must forgive, okay? So there's a phenomenal teaching um, there for you. It's on my YouTube channel. We did it some time ago. Um, and above, and also, listen, guys, if you um, um, are an Apple user, um, oh, I can't think of the other um, system that a lot of people use. I just can't think of it because I don't have it. The, that other um, mobile system, um, you can get, uh, oops, the Soterios Ministries app. Soterios Ministries app. Go in, put in Soterios Ministries. We have an app. And if you go into the app, you can click on media. There's a little button that says media. And look at all those videos. You can watch Bible studies for days right there. There's forgiveness one, two, and three right there for you. Okay. And um, all the way up to Colossians, except for last week, which I haven't figured out how to download there. But Android, thank you, um, Linda. If you have an Android and Kathy, if you have an Android or an Apple, you can get the Soterios Ministries. Let me go out of it and go in again. Um, let me close it. Um, and um, uh, that's what it'll look like once you open it. But it says Soterios Ministries loaded on your phone you, or your iPad. You can watch all that stuff anywhere. Okay. Um, and then look, and above all these, above everything we just said, put on love. Put on, you know, be endued with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Um, I'm pretty sure that's that word in do all again, but let's look at it and make sure. Colossians 3 and verse 14. Um, yeah, actually, that word might not be in there. That might just be the writer adding it for emphasis. Um, and above all these, what it, what it literally says in the Greek is, and above all these, love, agape, affection or benevolence, dear love. This is the, the type of love that flows from the heart of God. This is different from storge, um, like um, family love, um, eros, which is that ooh baby, ooh baby, gotta have you love, or phylos, which is you my boy, you know, brotherly love. Agape is the God, God kind of love, dear love, beloved, okay? Um, so ab above all these other things that we talked about, putting on forgiveness and grace and mercy and compassion, above all those, love, because put on love, because love binds everything together. That's sundesmos in the Greek. It means it bands. It, it's the uniting principle. If we allow the deposit of the God kind of love that he put in our heart if, if we allow that deposit to work in us and through us, the God kind of love to work in us and through us, then it, it binds everything else together. Everything else works together in perfect harmony. Those two, that expression is um, 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 teliotes, tel, teliotes, and it means completeness, perfection perfection. If you just allow the love of God that's in you through Christ, because Holy Spirit is in you, if you allow, and also because he put it in you, right? So right in, in the margin of your notes, Romans, I want to say it's chapter five. Uh, oh, Romans. 
Romans is a chapter three. Uh, Romans. Um, um, ba, 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 ba. Where does it tell us that we got the God kind of love? It's in Romans. I can't find it fast enough. Um, oh, wait. No. We've been justified, therefore we also have obtained access to where we stand, we rejoice. But only that we rejoice in sufferings, okay, endurance, and blah, blah, blah. Oh, be, oh, there it is. Romans 5 5. I was right. Okay. Romans chapter 5 and verse 5 says, And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So it is possible, it is possible for us to do these things that, that we have been studying. To, to love I got it's possible for us to do this even with an enemy even with people that we don't like it's possible because God's love has been poured that the ESV says poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit okay that lives in us all right and so 15 verse 15 and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. So let the peace, the arene, the quietness, the rest, the tranquility, the security, the, 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 the safety, the, the prosperity, the, that ease, that like, man, you know, you're not going to get on my nerves today. <laughs> Rule. This is one of my life verses right here. I share this in counseling with people all the time. Let the peace of God, of, of Christ, rule, brabe uo, it means he's the umpire. Peace is the umpire. Peace decides, it determines, it controls, it calls the place like the ump behind the catcher in a, in a baseball game. The peace calls the, the, the balls and the strikes. So whenever you're trying to make any decision or you've got anything going on in your life and you try to figure out what to do, if you don't have peace, even if you don't understand everything, even if you don't understand all the steps or know how a thing is going to happen, sometimes you just have a peace in your heart. That let that peace rule, brabe uo. Peace is the umpire. Peace makes the decision. Peace calls the play. So when I tell people when they don't have peace, you have either a red light or a yellow caution light. Never run the light. Wait until the light turns green and you have that, man, I don't know why, but I just got a good feeling about this. I just have this peace, this sense of say, let peace rule the heart. Just highlight that whole verse in your Bible. Let peace rule your heart, your cardia, your feelings, your mind, always peace. Um, to which indeed you were called, kaleo, you have been invited. You have been invited into a place of peace in God, okay, through Christ. And be thankful, Eucharisto, Eucharisto. Um, that's why some churches, some denominations call um, communion, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the Eucharisto, the Eucharist, because it's, it's the great thanksgiving. We come to the table and we give thanks to the Lord for what he has done, okay? Be thankful, be grateful you know, um, be, um, beneficent um, um, when it comes to the things of God. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another. This is why it's important for us to do what we're doing now with Bible study and, and um, in small groups and, you know, um, having a meal with a friend, you know, and in church, you know, when we're talking the word and we're we're sharing the word, what are we doing? We're we're letting the word of Christ dwell in us richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms. That's what we were doing earlier. Well, no, we didn't. That's what I was doing with my guitar, you know, with my guitar, you know. Yep. Singing psalms, um, spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So let the word, let the logos, the communication, the decree, the discourse, the, the word of God, the word of Christ dwell 
and noikeo. Let it abide, let it, let it dwell in you. And listen, this word means it not only lives in you, but it influences you for good. Don't you love that word? That word dwell is not just, oh, I know that's in the Bible, but it's not influencing you for good, then it's not dwelling. Did you get that? That was good. That was good. Let the word of Christ dwell in noike all. Let it, 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 it do, it's working in you. Let the word work in you. It's influencing you for good. Teaching let, uh, uh, in you richly. That's the, um, the word plusios, abundantly. Uh, lots of word, lots. You can never get enough word. Let the word, the communication, the living word uh, live in you so that it's influencing you richly. It has abundant influence in your life. The word, don't be one of those people that say, well, I know that's what the Bible say, but I disagree. I, I think that Paul, you know, was just being a Pharisee there. That's what they used to do when I was in seminary. You know, I disagree with Paul as if they actually had that right. You know, you don't get to disagree with what the Holy Spirit has inspired with the canon of scripture. Now you can disagree with something that's in something that I wrote or something that somebody else wrote, but you don't get to disagree with the canon of scripture. Okay. Um, you can, but it's, it will not be to your good. So let the word dwell richly in us because when the word dwells richly in me and the word is influencing me for good, then I can teach and admonish uh, someone else. But if the word is not dwelling in you richly, you don't know the word, you don't care what it say, how can you teach and, and admonish somebody else concerning the word, okay? That means you got to take the time, pay the price. So teaching, didasco, to, you know, instructing, imparting instruction, teaching and admonishing. That means how we caution. Oh, I don't think you should do that, you know. Reprove gently. We reprove gently. We reprove gently. We, we don't yell and tear each other down. We reprove gently. You, we warn and we exhort. That's what it means to admonish. We do the things with, with the heart of Christ, okay? Teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. That's the Greek word sophia, um, uh, meaning um, skill, knowledge, wisdom, um, singing, ado. That's the Greek word ado. It means to the praise of anyone, to sing. We come together as believers and we sing when we get together. Why? Because it, it lifts us up. It should, you know, as we open our heart and we focus on him and we sing in adoration, we worship psalmos, psalmos, a set piece of music, a sacred ode, hymnos, hymns, a song of praise, a song in the praise of God, heroes, conquerors. In this case, it is a sacred song, okay? Um, spiritual song. So it's covering all different types of musical expressions. We can sing a cappella. We can sing a song that's like just, you know, flowing out of the spirit. We can sing a song that's to a set piece of music. We can, you know, uh, bring out a hymn that is a, a, a tribute to our God. How great thou art, you know, oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. You know, we sing a hymn in adoration to him and spiritual songs. Those are pneumaticos. Those are um, supernatural songs. That's just. One of the reasons why I started learning guitar, the Holy Spirit telling me, you know, find a chord progression, you know, and um, um, just beginning to sing in the spirit, you know, like to that chord progression as you. You know, just play a chord progression and sing in the, in the spirit. At least I'm working on it, I'm trying, okay? 
I'm still learning. So give me, give me, give me some grace. Um, uh, pneumatical song. That don't you love it? I mean, it's right there, verse 16. That diversity of expressions, see, and we do all of it with thankfulness, thankfulness in our hearts to God. Um, gratitude, grace, favor. And look at verse 17. Oh man, look at the time. Verse 17, and whatever you do <clears throat> in word and deed, whatever you do in word, that's logos, however you take this and make it a part of your day-to-day -day expression, whatever you do in word or deed, this becoming action, ergon, labor, doing, do everything, airfine, do airfine in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks, Eucharistos, to God the Father through him. See? <clears throat> now the next time when we get together, we're going to pick up at verse 18 because what he does, <clears throat> which I love, he shifts gears and he begins to talk about families, particularly, and how we can take all this stuff that we just we just talked about and apply it to families, um, just to give you a heads up. Families, what they were, what many think they should do or should not be, and what they ought to be. Families are a permanent union for a man and a woman the best possible environment in which to raise the next generation of well-functioning citizens. Families are the safest help. They, well, they're supposed to be, because some families are crazy, but they're supposed to be the healthiest um, um, place, um, the wealthiest and least violent environment for women, men, and children. That's what they're supposed to be. And yet there are a lot of issues. So we're going to look at that next week and find out how we apply all these things in that context. So listen, guys, this is Bernardine Wormley Daniels, the Living Water Livestream Bible Study. Thank you for joining me, for um, breaking open the word and um, um, hiding it in your heart, letting Holy Spirit minister to you. Um, I will see you next time. Um, if you want to um, support the work that we do here. It allows me to do the things that I, that I do, like buy like 11 copies of this and pull together a small group and work with them. Some people have the, the funds to like reimburse the ministry for it. Some people don't because if we're in a COVID season. If they don't, that's okay. We sow it into their life. Okay. So the information is in the, in the, um, the comments. You can um, sew at um, paypal.me forward slash Soterios Ministries. Make sure it says Soterios Ministries because there's another Soterios out there. Make sure you see my picture. Or Cash App, um, which is dollar sign Dr. Bernie uh, SMI. Anything you send through Cash App goes straight to Soterios. It does not go in my pocket. Anything that you give to um, PayPal goes straight to Soterios. We are a 501c3 and your giving is tax deductible. All right, beloved, God bless you. I love you. He loves you even more. And I will see you next time. Take care.